Hello there, and welcome to the most meta YouTube video of life, where I talk about why you should not rely on YouTube videos for all of your financial information about investment strategy and personal finance. And I'm doing all of this on my personal finance channel. Surprising, I know. The thing is though, that money is so intrinsic to how we feel and operate in the world and having the right information can be so so empowering but on the flip side the stakes can be pretty high and if you get it wrong things can go Really and you don't want things to go really wrong, which is why relying solely on YouTube videos for information is probably a bad strategy, even though you get that lovely dopamine hit from watching them. It's definitely not all bad though, otherwise I would not be here, but it is important that you watch these videos with a little bit of critical thinking going on. And so in this video, what I wanna do is talk through some of the little red flags that I see. And of course, there is a little section at the end reserved for how you can use YouTube to supplement your financial education, i.e. why you don't need to stop watching YouTube videos altogether when it comes to personal finance, because it does have a role to play. So the first thing that I see that I would encourage you to think about is the fact that a lot of YouTube videos or a lot of YouTube creators are prone to disguising opinions as facts. This isn't always intentional, but in the drive to sound authoritative and also in the repeated consumption of very similar videos, information that started out as opinion can sometimes become an accepted fact, even though it's not necessarily the case. For example, if no matter what people say about the stock market, while the probability is high that it will do better than cash in your savings, there is no guarantee and the economy, the stock market, all of these things are numbers driven, which makes them seem like a science when actually they are entirely made up constructions and so much of it depends on human emotions. And so if you encounter somebody saying this is the way, you should immediately question whether it is indeed the way or whether it is just a piece of information that's become very normalized in that person's thoughts. Because a lot of us on here on YouTube are speaking from personal experience. We're talking about things that we've learned along the way. As far as the the presenter is concerned, that, that is a fact, but it might not be true for you too. The second thing I wanted to point out is the fact that advice on the internet is not tailored to you. So while there is a lot of a recommendation and a lot of the recommendations are going to be good they're still not specific to your particular life there are so many variables that affect what's going to work for you your age your salary whether you have dependents how much money you have in savings at the moment these are all things that somebody on the side of a screen does not know about you and so they may be making sweeping recommendations that apply perfectly to a lot of people but they might not apply to you and you should always be very mindful of that when you are watching personal finance youtube videos and thirdly this one cannot be overstated 99.9% .9 of people talking about money on YouTube are not qualified to give financial advice and that includes the bankers and the accountants who will even confess themselves that earning a high salary does not necessarily mean that you're good with money if you really want reliable tailored to you advice the only place to go is financial advisor or if you have not got loads of money to cough up get reading buy a bunch of books and the reason i say that is because as a rule of thumb books are researched in much more depth the people who write them i.e the authors usually have verifiable credentials and in the book publishing business, there is a fact checking process. It might be better or worse, but it is there. Unlike most personal finance YouTube videos. So yeah, the good thing and the bad thing about YouTube is that the barrier to entry is low. Anyone can grab their phone camera and start talking about personal finance tips or investment strategies and that definitely has its place which I'll get to you in a second but as long as you're consuming that kind of content you really need to be aware that the person who's talking may not be qualified to, to be telling you, you what you should be doing with your money okay so if there is so much shady information on YouTube why am I even here it's that I do believe that YouTube has a place and that low barrier to entry I mentioned 
is really awesome because it democratizes information. So for me, a few years ago, I was that girl who was a bit freaked out about the whole money thing. I didn't understand how it worked. I didn't know what I was supposed to do with it. And that whole scenario felt quite stressful. And I know so many people who feel exactly like that. And the thing is that the finance industry is full of jargon and that makes it very unfriendly and intimidating to even start researching. And that's forgetting the fact that there is so much information that sometimes it can be just impossible to know where to start. So I started a YouTube channel because where I got my first little pieces of like nuggets of information from were from talking to my friends and figuring out what they were actually doing with their money. And if you don't have a couple of friends like I did who are really knowledgeable about personal finance, you have YouTube instead. And that's amazing. So on a very practical level, I think YouTube is amazing because A, it introduces you to the idea of personal finance, the things that you need to be aware of, like the mindset and the investment concepts which are gonna help you improve your financial situation. There's a really nice concept called skill stacking. And the idea is that you have a base level of knowledge and then you can build on each level. And I think YouTube is a really nice, welcoming, easy to digest first step on that ladder. So it can be really helpful to A, introduce you to the concepts like I mentioned, B, give you a direction for what research you even need to do. And then secondly, once you actually open, you're not being bombarded by new concepts. There are things that you will have heard of previously. And there is a, another benefit and that is the role of motivation because it is undeniable that when you are watching other people on screen, talking about all the stuff they've learned and all the success that they've had and how they've arrived at a feeling of calm and a sense of control. That is very encouraging and having that little push can be really helpful to get you on the right road. So in short, I think YouTube is a fantastic tool for your financial education or that journey that you're on. But it's really important that it is not your only source of information. You really need to put the time in to read, to really have a solid, reliable grip on the subject. And having said all of that, in case you're not quite ready to dive into the reading, come back to this YouTube channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.